In this A-level IB chemistry video, we're going to be considering both the solubility and conductivity of various chemical structures. So in order for conductivity to occur in a substance, then you must have either free electrons or ions. Remember the fancy word for free is delocalized. So naming a substance that has delocalized electrons, obviously your primary example of this is metals. And this explains why metals are great conductors of actually both heat and electricity. Less well known is an allotrope of carbon known as graphite. This also has delocalized electrons, making it an excellent conductor of electricity. Now, when do we get free ions? Well, that's when we get giant ionic structures, which are either molten or in aqueous solution. By being molten or in aqueous solution, it means that they have free ions. When they're solid, they do not conduct. They do when they are liquid. So my main take home message here is that when you're looking at ionic substances, it's the ions which carry the charge. When we're looking at metals and graphite, it's electrons which carry the charge. When we have situations when both the electrons or ions are held in fixed positions, then you find that no electrical conductivity occurs. We're now going to consider the solubility of substances and the thing really to remember here is that like tends to dissolve like. And so therefore we can take polar substances and you tend to find that they dissolve in polar solvents. A polar substance such as sodium chloride well, that's going to dissolve well in water, which is a polar solvent. And we know this because effectively we've got table salt being added to water, readily dissolves. So we've seen this in everyday life that this is true. And going back to our like tends to dissolve like, that means therefore by definition that non-polar substances tend to dissolve in non-polar solvents. So we'll take a non-polar example now, so that's carbon dioxide, and it will readily dissolve in a non-polar solvent, which could include heptane or tetrachloromethane. Let's make a quick note now on organic molecules, so remember those are ones which contain carbon. Now the crucial thing with organic molecules is that they contain a polar head, and non-polar carbon chains. So according to what we wrote above, they should really be able to dissolve in both polar and non-polar substances. But notice, because we know that in a homologous series there are varying lengths of carbon chain, notice that as the carbon chain length increases, they become less soluble in water which makes sense because really by increasing the length of the carbon chain, we're increasing how much of the molecule is non-polar. Water is polar, so therefore you're not living up to this theory that two polar substances would dissolve in each other. So therefore we're going to see decreased solubility with increased carbon chain length. One last thing we need to consider is ethanol, it contains two carbons, it's an alcohol so it has the OH functional group, the hydroxyl functional group. Now notice again that it has non-polar and polar ends to it and if I do a quick key, the non-polar end is obviously this bit, the carbon chain, the polar end is the hydroxyl group, the OH group. Now, because it has both non-polar and polar ends, you find that it acts as an excellent solvent for both polar and non-polar substances. And you do find that it is completely miscible with water. It mixes entirely, and that's because it can actually form hydrogen bonds with the water molecules.